Hello, my name is Peter Fisher, and today I'm going to talk about whether or not to use a framework, a question that we've probably all asked ourselves before. Uh, so I'm going to tackle this in two perspectives, and then after that what I'm going to do is sort of ask some really tough questions. Uh, so these two perspectives, we're going to talk about the learning a language via a framework. I'm going to talk about what that means in just a second, and then developing a system for production. So these are the two perspectives that we're going to look at. Um, now, these perspectives have different responsibilities, they have different requirements, um, and they have different priorities. Because if you think about it, when you're learning a language, uh, you're experimenting, you're trying to break stuff because you want to fix stuff. The more you break, the more you fix, the more you learn, so forth. That is the last thing you want to do in production. You don't want to break things at all. That's not a good, good idea. So these are polar opposites of the spectrum. Okay, so let's talk about using a framework when learning a language, and you'll be right to ask, well, why would anyone learn a language through a framework? Well, actually, on my uh, How to Code Well channel, YouTube channel, uh, that is actually quite a common thing I keep, keep sort of seeing, uh, because users uh, really, well, new, new developers, they kind of want to not only learn the language, but they want to learn the application, how to actually build contact forms, how to build... Uh, uh, sign up forms and, and all of that good stuff. Um, and so they attack it from the project perspective, not from I want to learn the language. Um, and they also see that the frameworks have good communities, they've got great documentation, lots of help, um, and that's a draw to do that. Uh, however, I've, I have put a, an asterisk on the lots of help because you have to make sure that when you're asking a question on GitHub, that the question isn't your misrepresentation of the language, um, because you know that's uh, that's quite embarrassing. So, I I'm not a particular fan of this kind of method of learning. I quite like to learn the language first and then learn the framework. Um, and the reason being, really, is because when you're doing it that way, you're learning the language. Sorry, you're learning the implementation of the language through the framework. The art you're looking at it through the eyes of framework. Of course different frameworks do things differently. Uh, and also, if you are just sort of siloed in the fact that you, you know one framework and you don't really know the language very well, then that is problematic when you're moving to another framework and so on and so forth. Uh, so it's not really a transferable skill if that is what you're doing. Okay, so that's the, that's the learning bit done. Let's talk about the developing a system for production. This is probably what we're all uh, kind of used to. Uh, in here. So let's talk about the pros. Well, we can grab the good practice documentation and community driven stuff from the learning perspective. These are all obviously great things. Um, and also, we've got uh, uh, extendability, we've got reliability, and we've got RAD. So you can rapidly uh, develop applications and put it in front of clients and, and customers and say, look at what we can scaffold and build. And also, you've got choice, and I'll talk about that in just a second. So the cons, uh, often I hear there's issues with bloat, so I don't want this framework because it has all of these features and uh, files that I just don't really care about. And also the, the whole fighting of the framework. So this is where sort of 80% of the framework um, is really great and you're using it, uh, but 20% of the framework is a problem and you have to sort of like crowbar your way in. And also it's quite difficult once invested because, to change once invested because uh, once you've built your system in a particular framework, moving the whole thing to another framework can be quite troublesome. However, that is also true, of course, when you're rolling your own, and we'll talk about that in just a second. I want to focus on bloat, and I want to focus on fighting, fighting the framework, because really, if you think about it, these are true of monolithic frameworks. Um, so we're talking now about the, the old days where you had to have big frameworks to do anything. On the flip side of this, of course, you've got choice and compatibility, which are on the micro frameworks. So when I say choice here, it's not only the choice of the micro framework, but it's also the choice of the components that you put in to the micro framework. And you now have compatibility of other um, frameworks too, because most of those components are in the other frameworks. Um, so they're, they're, they, are, they are good wins. So let's now talk about rolling your own. Uh, the pros to roll your own is obviously there's high learning potential because you are literally doing it all and you're learning it the hard way. <laughs> um, 
However, it's streamlined and it's bespoke, which means that you can actually build it that fits the system that, you, that you've got. So you could even go right the way down to the hardware level, because if that's what you own, um, and you own it, which is uh, a nice desirable, perhaps. So the cons is lack of support. Like I've said, you are literally on your own. Also, I should say, is uh, from a business perspective, um, getting, uh, talking about frameworks to clients, they don't really care about that, the, the, you know, freelance clients and stuff. But when you say, oh, you know, but I know several Symfony developers, or I know several Laravel de developers that can come and help build this thing. And that's a good thing. Um, and also, uh, you're not really able to develop complex things very quickly uh, because you're having to recode stuff that someone else has already done. So let's now focus on some tough questions as we've got that out of the way. So is it needed? This is a, a, a really tough question because you've got to be really honest when you ask these things because if you're building a five-page website and the most complicated thing on that website is a contact form, then really do you need to have a node modules folder or a vendor folder that has hundreds if not thousands of files in there just to do that? Why don't you use a static site generator like uh, uh, was mentioned earlier? And also, will this benefit me or will this benefit the project? Because we are pretty much magpies. We like the new shiny toy. Um, but you're, you're thinking about it from your personal development, not from the development of the project. Uh, and how much time is required to not only maintain the framework, but also as in like when the updates come through, uh, but, but how much time is it required to actually investigate uh, what frameworks are available? So you kind of need to do a bit of R&D. Is it actually possible? Because in some cases, you might be um, working on software that you just can't, simply can't upgrade. So you might be on a hosting platform, and you don't manage that. So you're forced to use a very old version of PHP, for instance. Um, and so you can't get away with that. So you kind of really need to ask these questions. And also, um, if you choose to use a framework, you should really be able to answer why you are using it and be able to identify what problems it is solving. And please, please write this down. Because once you write this down, you're invested in that decision. Uh, and also, whenever I go to see people, clients, and so forth, uh, I usually say, well, why are you using this framework? Can you justify why you're using that framework over the other framework? The common answer is, well, the developer at the time who developed this thing, knew the framework very well, but then he left two years ago. And that is answering why that developer chose that framework. It's not answering why that project chose that framework. And also, uh, a, a more of a complicated question, I believe, is what features will the project have in the future, and will the framework allow for those changes? Features allow changes, OK? So um, this is kind of, this is the question of, please may I have a roadmap? Because you don't want to be building something that is very blog orientated and then discover down the line that you actually need a need commerce shopping cart. And you're like, oh, I've got two systems and they're doing this. So just to sum up, you shouldn't choose the framework. Uh, the needs of the project should choose the framework for you or whether or not you're using the framework. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>